Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part six for our platform shooter tutorial series in Game Maker Studio 2. In this part, we're going to be improving the artificial intelligence a little bit more. We're going to allow it to fire shots at the player. We're also going to fix a small glitch with the player's the way the player gun works. First, let's fix that glitch. So open up your player object. And let's actually run the game real quick so you guys can see this, what's going on. If we have, a, when, we, when we're firing our gun, the bullets actually move towards the mouse and not in the same direction the gun is pointing. So you can see down here, we're actually able to shoot downwards when our gun is shooting up. And this is because the bullets actually, if we look into, in, if we look in the bullet code right here, their direction is their position pointing towards the mouse's position. So that allows us to actually make the bullets fire downwards because the mouse is still, the the gun is pointing from the player's uh, center to the mouse's position, and that's what's um, angling the gun but the and it's actually from the bottom of the player like that you can see how we rotate around the bottom of the player right there but the bullets are actually going from the position they're created at towards the mouse so in this situation right here we're able to shoot downwards now this is just a consequence of the way that we program this system and it's really I think it's kind of a good thing that this came up because it shows that when you're programming you can actually have situations come up that you didn't intend that you weren't expecting based on the rules that you give it now the program is always going to run how it's supposed to given there's no bugs in the engine but generally the bugs that we encounter are ones that were created by the programmer in the set of rules that they created. So the best way to fix this is actually to set the direction of our bullet to be the same as the direction that the gun is facing. And we can actually figure this out by coming into the player object and when we're, when we're actually firing the bullet right here, this is where the bullet is being created, uh, this should be the direction that the bullet should be firing at, I think. So let's test this and make sure. It's possible to set the direction of the bullet right here, right after it's been created. Now you might think to do O underscore bullet dot direction equals dir, and that that would solve the problem. And remove direction from here. And the reason you might do that is because we have this direction right here, so we just pass that into the bullet. But if there's multiple bullet objects, and let me show you what this actually does, it's actually going to get probably the most newly created. See how I can make the bullets zigzag like that? It's because this right here is actually grabbing all the bullets, basically, and affecting their direction. So that would allow us to change the direction of bullets we've previously fired, which is cool, but not what we want. So what we need to get is access to this specific bullet instance right here. And the way we can do that is by actually creating a variable. var bullet equals instance create layer. Now, instance create layer, this function actually returns the ID of this specific bullet instance that we're creating. So we can store that in a variable and then access it later. So now instead of saying object bullet, we can just say bullet right here. And that will only reference this bullet right here that we just created. We can run the game again. And hopefully, this fixes our issue. And it does. The bullet is always firing in the same direction that the gun is pointing. Now, we probably want the gun, uh, 
we probably want our direction that we're pointing not to be based off of the center of the player like it is currently because that's kind of weird to to have this point up we would expect this to point down so we just need to change this right here so that it, it remembers the sprite the same sprite offset right here and I think that will fix what we want so we're just gonna do y minus sprite height divided by 2 this should give us a good enough approximation of the correct direction to point and it's still pointing based off of the sprites y position and that's probably because we're drawing it based off of that position now my guess is since we updated the direction here visually it works how it's supposed to well not visually but programmatically it's creating the bullet where it's supposed to but we're not actually drawing it where, where it's supposed to. So this direction also needs to use um, y minus sprite height divided by 2 inside of the draw event right here. So we change that both in the down press when we're firing and in the draw event. And now I think it should, in theory, yep, it rotates around the center of our player right here. And that's what we want. Now our aiming system seems to work how it's in how it's supposed to, how we intended it to in the first place. Hopefully you're able to follow that and see some of the reasoning why we couldn't use just object bullet right here. Now that we've done that, let's make it so that our enemies can fire bullets. Now there's a couple solutions that I've seen. One, we can create a single bullet object that both the player and the enemy can fire and then make that bullet know who created it so that it only damages other objects that aren't the same one or we can create a specific bullet object for the enemy as well I've actually creating a specific bullet object is a little bit more work but I think for beginners it's a little bit more straightforward and it's not necessarily that much more work uh, if you only have a few different objects but later on it becomes quite a bit easier if you use the other system where you create a single bullet that knows who created it and there's pluses and minuses to both of those but let's just create a new bullet here I'm gonna duplicate this object and just name this O enemy bullet and we want it to destroy itself when it collides with the solid object and we want to set its speed we'll probably give it a much slower speed since it's the enemy bullet and we might want to give it a different color too. So let's duplicate this sprite right here, the S bullet, and we'll make a new sprite called S underscore enemy bullet. And I'll make it kind of red. Okay, we're done with that. Let's come into our enemy bullet object, assign the new sprite so we have it red for the enemies. Now we want our enemies to create bullets. We already have, let's see, we've got the enemy up there I think. So we'll close out of this right here, close out of this right here, and come zoom in. I'm holding control to zoom in and out by the way. Control and scroll. We have our attack state right here, but we're not actually doing, we're not actually creating anything in here. This is where we'll want to create the, the bullets. So we'll say, let's see, inside of our create event here, we want to set an alarm system up similar to the way we did with the player. So let's, let's go look at how we did that with the player. We set a bullet cooldown and alarm equal to zero. So let's do that. I'm just going to copy and paste this code, come into our enemy, and we'll add our bullet cooldown and our alarm zero. And I'm going to make this obviously significantly slower than the player so that they fire more slowly. I'm going to add an event. And do we need the alarm? I think we do. So we have to add our bullet cooldown alarm. Add an event. 
alarm zero, bullet cooldown alarm. We don't actually have to do anything in this. We just need the comment there so that GameMaker doesn't remove the event, just like we did here. Bullet cooldown. I actually am just going to copy this to be consistent. Middle click and paste it up here. Then inside of our state for attacking right here, we're going to check to see if we can fire a bullet. So we'll say if alarm zero is less than or equal to zero. I'm pretty sure that's how I did it in the player. Let's look at our left press. Yep. And we're going to copy this code right here for creating a bullet. Because it will be pretty similar inside of our enemy object here. Put our brackets and paste the code. And let's we'll call this create a bullet right here. Now creating the bullet is going to be a little bit simpler than it was previously. We don't need this anymore. Let's put this actually up here, right there. Okay. So the direction that we're going to get is going to be our current X and Y position. Pretty sure the enemies are centered. Yes, they are. So it'll be our X and Y position. X, Y. And then it's going to point towards the player. Now we want to make sure that... Oops, that was the wrong... That was the wrong thing. That's the player's one. Let's close out of that one now that we don't need it anymore. <laughs> Coming to here. Okay. And we've got double alarms here. Silly me. I accidentally copied that in. Okay, there we go. Now, we, we actually want to make sure that the player exists before we create a bullet. So let's actually put that inside of our if check right here. We'll just say and... Or you can use and like that. I'm just going to do and. Instance exists. Object player. Now we want to make sure that the player exists so that we can point towards the player. So instead of pointing towards the mouse, we'll do O underscore player dot X and O underscore player dot Y. Now what would happen if we didn't have this check right here? Let me show you show you what would happen because it's a good this is a common issue that comes up so well they're actually trying to shoot me still huh in the attack state oh it's because the player does exist <laughs> so let's imagine that the player is not in the room we'll remove the player now what happens Well, now we're going to get an issue here. And it's going to say we can't find the player object. And so that's why we have that check there. And my guess is actually that we don't have the check inside of our move event either. Right here. So we're trying to move towards the player, but we didn't actually check to make sure that the player exists here either. So let's add that. If instance exists. In fact, in here, yeah, let's just do it this way. Object player. Okay. I'm going to select this whole thing right here and tab it in. That's all part of the check to make sure the player exists. Now inside of our attack state, we do the same thing, right? We just make sure that we're checking to make sure the player exists. And we'll actually want to do this check earlier because we try and access the player up here at the top. See this? Distance to player. So we're going to want to do it at the very top. If instance exists player, run this code. And there we go. We're making sure the player exists before we ever try and access it. 
Okay, so now we're pointing towards the player. Uh, we don't need to have this flipped or the gun offset or any of this right here. I can remove that for now. Well, we might keep the X and Y offset actually. That could be useful. So let's just do X right here and Y right here plus X offset plus Y offset. And we want to create the enemy bullet. Enemy bullet, not the normal bullet. We'll set its direction to our direction pointing towards the player. That looks good. And we'll set our alarm cooldown. Let's make sure this works. Oh yeah, we got to put our player back in the room. But you can see we don't get the error now. Put the player right here. I'm going to move this. I'm going to get rid of this enemy actually. Delete it. Run the game. There we go. When they get close enough, they start firing bullets at us. Now we don't actually take damage yet. So we'll want to do that. Okay, inside the player object, let's add a collision. Where's our collision? Here we go, with the bullet. We'll take some damage here. Our player needs uh, a health. We, ha we haven't created one yet. So I'm going to create health underscore and set it equal to 5. So we can take 5 hits. We'll try that first. Let's come into our enemy bullet and we'll say health underscore minus equals 1. So we take 1 damage from each enemy bullet and then we'll say with other. So with the end, well, actually we don't have to do that anymore. I forgot instance destroy works this way. Instance destroy other. Okay. Now if you're in Game Maker Studio 1.4, I should mention that you'll need to use um, this code with other instance destroy instead of this. This won't work in Game Maker Studio 1.4. But if you're in Game Maker Studio 2, then you can use this code right here. Then inside of our player step event, we're going to add a check. And I'll do it right up here at the very top. Check for death if health underscore is less than or equal to zero. Instance destroy. There we go. Now the player should be able to die if he takes too many shots. And yes, the player died. Now the enemies are technically aiming for the player, the, the bottom of the player, this origin right here. So what we want to do, if we want to fix that, because it looks a little bit odd, we'll come into our attack state right here. Instead of just doing object player dot y, we'll do object player dot y minus object player dot sprite height divided by two. In the same way that we did with the gun and with the bullets. Now the enemy should aim for the center of the player and we can currently die. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. We'll be doing more in the next video, part 7, I believe. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe if you haven't yet and share it on Twitter. I will talk to you guys later.